In this episode, we're going to have a look at making purchases with cryptocurrency. And the basic process is that someone will come to your site, they'll see something that they want to purchase, and then they'll click the buy with crypto button. When they click on it, it'll take them to a place where they can then fill out which kind of coin they want to pay with, and then they can send a payment to that address. And once that payment has been made, then a webhook will be sent back to our Rails application so we can then process the transaction and give access to whatever product they ordered. And we'll be using Coinbase to process those transactions for a couple of different reasons. One, I think that Coinbase is one of the more reputable companies out there dealing with cryptocurrencies and they make integrating with their services pretty easy. However, there are a few things that you do need to know about before jumping on with Coinbase. And it's something that they claim that they will have eventually, and that is to test out your transactions. Currently, in order to test out as you're developing, you won't be able to send any kind of cryptocurrency on a test network. Instead, it's going to be the actual live coins. And one additional thing that you should be aware of is that a cryptocurrency transaction is a one-time thing. So if you have any kind of subscription where your users are wanting to pay with Bitcoins, however, they are wanting to set this up on a recurrence basis, you're not really going to be able to do that. Instead, you would have to send them out an invoice that they would then have to click on and send more coins to the specified address. So if you are going to use this for subscriptions, I would suggest maybe doing it in blocks of three months or one year, just to save the end user a bit of hassle. And so after you sign up for a account on commerce.coinbase.com, you can come down to the settings. And this is where you can set up some of your preferences around how the look and feel should be. So you can update a logo, you can have a default color scheme, manage your two-factor authentication, and then you come down to flexible payments. And essentially, because we are dealing with cryptocurrency, which is extremely volatile, and its price fluctuates quite a bit, someone could accidentally overpay at the point of when that transaction occurs, based on the amount that they were quoted just a few minutes ago. So I do like how they have it set up, where they give you examples of what these values actually mean. And so they have thresholds for underpayments, and then also overpayments. But if we come down towards the bottom, we can configure two different sections. The API keys is going to be useful when you need to communicate with the Coinbase API from within your application. But that's actually not even required. If you wanted to do less development work, you could create checkouts, which will then give you that buy with crypto button. Once the end user sends the tokens, you could have a webhook that sends back a transaction to your application, and you can then process it there. And so I would go ahead and copy the API key because we are going to be using that for managing the checkouts. Under the webhook subscriptions, you will want to also get the shared secret because you will want to verify that the transactions coming into this endpoint are in fact from Coinbase. If we go into the details of this webhook and we edit the events, you can see that there's a lot of different events that we can track. And so the most important one is going to be the charge confirmed, because that means that a charge has been confirmed on the blockchain, meaning that, meaning that there's been enough verifications on other nodes on the network to say that this transaction has taken place. And so if we come to the checkouts tab, we can create a new checkout, We'll sell a product, we can give a title, a description, and then we can give a price. Continuing on, we can collect certain information from the customer. Because we're not capturing any data with this transaction, you may want to grab the email address, just so the user can be associated to this transaction. And once we create it, we then get a link that can take us right to that payment page, or we can get this embedded script which the embedded script will give us this buy with crypto button. And because we are loading a JavaScript file from the embedded script, it pops up as a modal to then continue on with the transaction. And we're also going to look at the checkouts where we can get a list of all the checkouts that we have created, and then we can create new ones. So we can create a test one and let's just require the name. So when we save this and we come back to our checkouts, we have this new checkout 
and we could continue on with this transaction. And you can see now it's a much smaller amount, which is the equivalent of about 11 US dollars. And did you know that you can go to railstore.com to get your own Ruby on Rails t-shirt or your Drift and Ruby t-shirt. So be sure to check that out and use the promo code Ruby for free shipping within the United States. To watch this full episode and more videos, visit driftandruby.com and subscribe to the pro membership.